All right. Hello, everyone. Every, hey, oh, I'm, I'm probably still a bit jet lagged. So I uh, was going to say hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to this session. Uh, I will be speaking about machine learning. Uh, and especially what Google and Google Cloud in particular provides in terms of uh, machine learning uh, with a big focus on the, on the available machine learning APIs in particular. And I'll say a few words as well uh, about the, the TensorFlow open source project uh, and the, the Cloud Machine Learning Engine um, platform. So, uh, well, you, you saw me this morning uh, during the, the keynote. I'm Guillaume Laforge. I'm a developer advocate uh, for Google Cloud, and I work in the Google Paris office in France. Um, back in, uh, I forget in which year that was, but you remember uh, in, the, in the 90s, I think, when uh, Kasparov, uh, the chess player, uh, played against uh, Deep Blue. Uh, an IBM uh, uh, program uh, and computer. Um, the computer managed to uh, beat the, the best chess player in the world for uh, the, the first time. What was interesting was that um, compared to what we're doing now uh, here with uh, AlphaGo, um, when uh, we, when the, the, the engineers who actually designed this uh, program, uh, they instructed the, uh, the computer to actually uh, learn about the, the rules, to, to teach it the, 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 the rules of the, the game of chess uh, by saying, okay, these are the uh, legal moves uh, that are allowed, uh, here's how pieces move, etc. Uh, so it was really a brute force search through a, a tree of possible moves and through uh, legal moves that had been taught to the, to the actual program. So it was really human beings teaching, giving the rules uh, to a program. But today, uh, with AlphaGo, which uh, a few months ago beat uh, Lee Sedol in Korea and uh, uh, the, the Chinese champion, I, I forgot his name, uh, just uh, last week or the week before, um, a different approach was used. Uh, deep learning using neural networks was used uh, to have a neural network actually learn the game of Go by just looking at positions and the, the, the various positions throughout the game, uh, but without actually teaching, teaching the exact rules of the game. So instead of doing teaching rules and brute force search, etc., instead, we uh, give tons of uh, games of Go, uh, of existing games, and the, uh, the neural networks, just like the human brain with, with our neurons, uh, actually learns how to play the game. So it's a totally uh, different approach. And so this is the, a team called uh, DeepMind within uh, Google that uh, created this special uh, neural network uh, to, uh, uh, to play the, 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 the game of Go. Um, in the, also in the uh, uh, 70s, 80s, 80s in particular, there was something we call the AI winter, the artificial intelligence, intelligence winter, uh, in the sense that uh, there had been lots of research in the field of uh, artificial intelligence, uh, but unfortunately it didn't really yield the results uh, researchers expected. Uh, so we kept on researching, but much less credits were put into uh, that type of research. Uh, but today we see a kind of resurgence of uh, artificial intelligence and in particular machine learning thanks to uh, neural networks uh, for two reasons uh, why we are seeing this uh, renewal. Uh, first of all, there's way more data which is available today, labeled data sets. Um, so, for example, all the games of uh, Go, uh, all, all the games of chess, etc. And also, I mean, all our websites, uh, applications are collecting tons and tons of, the, of useful data. And uh, from that data, uh, you can use machine learning techniques to uh, derive uh, interesting things, uh, interesting knowledge. Uh, so this is the first 
thing. Uh, for example, for image recognition, uh, we have tons of uh, pictures uh, within which we know uh, what elements are in that picture, etc. That's the first aspect, more data sets with uh, labeled data. So we know that, okay, this picture contains a cat, for example. And the other aspect uh, is uh, now with the very powerful machines that we have with C uh, very fast CPUs and GPUs, as well as, uh, for example, uh, Google created its own uh, special machine learning uh, CPU called TPU, Tensor, Tensor, Tensor Processing Unit. Uh, and also think about uh, all those servers that can be put together in the cloud uh, to work in parallel across uh, uh, even bigger models uh, of uh, uh, machine learning and uh, neural networks. So if you combine the, these more labeled data sets, more compute power to train your models uh, on, on, on bigger hardware uh, in a distributed way, uh, we managed to escape this AI winter and see uh, machine learning being used in more and more places. And speaking of that, I'm going to take one uh, little example where uh, machine learning is actually applied. Uh, so I'm using Google Photos for, for my pictures. Uh, before, let's say I wanted to uh, look for pictures of dogs. Uh, my dog, for example. I don't have a dog, but whatever. Um, if I wanted to search for the pictures of uh, my dog, I would have had to flick through tons and tons of pages of pictures to find, okay, where's my dog, where's my dog, where's my dog? Uh, the other approach would be, you know, you manually, each time you add a new picture uh, in your library, you add labels saying, okay, in that picture there's a dog, uh, it's, uh, this picture was taken during my vacations uh, in, that, in Singapore or wherever else. And then potentially you could have searched through uh, those, those labels. Uh, but here, what's interesting is that, thanks to machine learning, we're able to say, okay, I want to search for dog, uh, and automatically it will find uh, in my pictures uh, the pictures containing a dog. And even more interesting, you can do that uh, combining different machine learning APIs uh, under, under the hood. So, for example, there's the speech recognition API, so you could say uh, you, in, in the search query, you can use the, the, the voice input, and you say Doug, and it's going to use machine learning models for uh, voice and speech recognition to actually, from the voice, from the audio file, uh, actually get the word that is uh, said, uh, in this case, Doug. And then, uh, with uh, natural language processing, you can actually make sense of the text uh, that was made to recognize uh, the, the various entities or elements in, inside that sentence. And then uh, use the vision API uh, to actually uh, analyze what's inside pictures. And at Google, uh, many other uh, applications and services and tools uh, actually uh, take advantage of machine learning. Uh, so for example, uh, which one am I, am I going to mention? Um, again, like the, uh, the, the inbox, Google Inbox. Uh, these days, uh, I think it's 20% of the, um, uh, the replies. I, I don't know if you know about this feature in Google Inbox for those who use it. There's a, some kind of buttons at the end of an email that you receive to, to give a canned response and it figures out the, uh, the response to say uh, by reading your email and looking at what's inside. And for example, if someone uh, uh, says, uh, okay, well, let's meet uh, at that uh, place on that uh, particular day, uh, you've got various options like, okay, thanks, uh, let's do that or whatever. Uh, and 20% of the replies that are made with Google Inbox uh, today on mobile devices are done through this uh, mechanism, uh, and uh, it's using machine learning to actually figure out the kind of canned responses uh, to give uh, to a particular email. And all those, uh, yeah, all those products and many more are actually using uh, machine learning models. This is a little graph of uh, machine learning usage uh, inside the, uh, the, the um, Google repository uh, um, of uh, source code. 
uh, at Google, we actually have a, one huge source code repository, which contains uh, all the code base of all the uh, products uh, at Google. So you can search uh, the source code of Gmail, the source code of uh, uh, any other uh, uh, Google calendar or, or, any, or any other uh, product. And this is a search through uh, all, all that code base since uh, 2012 until uh, fairly recently, uh, until last year. And uh, it's the, this curve shows, this graph shows the number of directories that actually contain those uh, machine learning uh, model description files. And as you can see, there's a pretty much an exponential increase in terms of usage of uh, the machine learning uh, techniques in, inside uh, Google products and services. Sundar Pichai, the uh, CEO of Google, uh, said uh, on a few occasions already that uh, we're actually moving from being a, a mobile first company to being an AI first and artificial, whoops, an artificial intelligence, um, where is it? Yeah, it's here. That's a software update <laughs> popping up. Um, uh, so m mobile is still obviously uh, very important, uh, but uh, we're trying to add artificial intelligence, machine learning, wherever possible, where, wherever we can add value to uh, our users, to our tools, uh, and our services. So it's really a, a strong um, desire to, to improve uh, our apps and services uh, with machine learning. Uh, at Google, and in particular Google uh, Cloud, and Google Cloud Platform, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to present a little bit the, the spectrum of what's available. So on the, uh, th there are ready-made APIs uh, for vision, speech recognition, etc., which are available. And I'm going to show you the, uh, the, the little uh, logos there. Uh, so this is, uh, well, APIs that you can use directly, either with a REST API that you can call or with an, an SDK in various languages. So for example, SDKs for uh, Java. And on the, other hand, on the other end of the spectrum, uh, we, we have the open source uh, framework, TensorFlow, uh, which you can use to actually train and create your own models, AI models. Uh, and in the middle, there's a cloud machine learning engine, which is uh, a cloud uh, environment where you can actually train uh, your neural networks, your models, and also do predictions uh, or inferences uh, to, uh, let's say you give a new picture and to get the result, okay, what's in, inside that picture? So you can do both the training, so you give all the labeled pictures, uh, okay, this one contains a cat, this one contains a dog, and then you can also, later on, once the model is trained, uh, you can uh, make the, the prediction. So we're going to look at all, the, all, 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 all these, uh, with a big focus on the uh, APIs. So before diving in, uh, let's do a, a little experiment together. Uh, since uh, neural networks actually learn from uh, examples, uh, let's say uh, you have a picture. OK, is there a cat or a dog inside that picture? Uh, so to, to show you a little bit about the structure, uh, and what we call that deep learning, because there are various levels of uh, uh, d d different layers of uh, neurons. So there's a, the, the, the base layer, the input layer, uh, actually uh, there are pretty much as many uh, neurons as uh, pixels uh, in, your, in your picture. Then as uh, the other neurons in the upper layers are activated, uh, they start to actually recognize, let's say, the, 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 you know, the bounds, the, the, uh, the, the shapes of things or particular uh, aspects. And as you go further uh, and upper in the, in the layers, perhaps it's going to recognize, okay, here, here there's a, an ear, here there's the tail or whatever. And then at the very top, there's the output layer, which says, okay, it's a cat or it's a dog. And it's deep because of the number of layers which are available. And with the computing resources that we have today, we are actually able uh, to, uh, uh, to create very large and complex uh, uh, neural networks. So 
if we try to do this uh, with the usual approach of uh, devising rules, uh, so humans uh, defining rules to say, okay, I want to recognize uh, cats and dogs. So le let's uh, apply this to something like uh, fruits. How to recognize a fruit? So for, you have a, an apple, you have an orange. So how do you recognize an apple from an orange? What's the difference? Which kind of rule you would give? Color? Okay. But let's say you've got a grayscale picture. Ah, yeah. So how you, you still recognize the, the fruits, right? So the shape, the texture, okay. Uh, for example, the like the the the, the yeah the the colors. Uh, well, no, not necessarily the colors, but you know the the red and green on on the apple. Okay, so you you could try to look at all these things. But for example, if you take a mango, you also see the same kind of mixing of red and, and green, right? Uh, so it's not so easy to define rules, uh, especially when you know there are new sorts of uh, fruits, new sorts of uh, things. So. It's not that easy even uh, for us humans to, uh, and you also have to do the uh, actual shape recognition somehow uh, via the pixels looking at an array, regardless of uh, how many pixels you have, because you might have different sizes, etc. So it's not really straightforward. Another example, uh, okay, you know, fruits. Perhaps the fruits always are kind of round, well, except bananas or whatever, but. It's always kind of run. So something like a dog and a mop. Uh, I mean, it's much easier to differentiate the two, right? Yeah? You agree with me so far? Let's look at this dog. <laughs> a common door. Uh, that's the name of that kind of dog, that, that dog breed. And, and the mop. <laughs> um, well, for some, well, the first one is it's probably obvious, or the the the, the one on the, this one as well. It pretty much looks like a moth, so that that's um, that's okay. But you know, like this one or perhaps this one, it's uh, much harder to figure out, right? So th there again, you know, defining rules for that that's pretty pretty complicated. Um, so this is an example with pictures, but. Um, how to do that with all the things, with video, with audio, with text, etc. And that's where we have uh, pre-trained models, uh, pre-trained uh, uh, models which uh, are bundled in the form of APIs that you can use with the REST interface or via uh, some SDK in, uh, in different languages. So we'll have a look at uh, those various APIs. So the Vision API. Uh, there are many features which are supported, uh, label detection, so you can see, okay, that's a cheetah in that picture, face detection, to find the faces in the pictures, text detection, so it's going to recognize what's written on the sign, e explicit content, so I didn't put a picture of explicit content, as you can get, uh, landmark detection to see, uh, okay, this is the Eiffel Tower, logo detection, etc. Uh, let's look at this picture from uh, some of my colleagues. Uh, so this is uh, part of the JSON payload which is returned uh, by the API. So for example, you can see that uh, for, for the face, okay, um, that, that person, uh, Sarah, uh, has no headwear. Uh, the, the joy likelihood, uh, she's smiling, so it's very likely that, that she's happy. And you, you, you also see the, the bounding boxes uh, where the, the face actually appears in the picture. So there's uh, various, uh, in, there's lots of information available. Uh, landmark detection, do you know what monument this is? Eiffel Tower? Wrong. This is actually the Paris Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. That's, uh, you know, the smaller shape Eiffel Tower? And uh, interestingly, the API managed to recognize that it's not the real Eiffel Tower, but that's the one uh, in Las Vegas. So again, um, so you've got the, the, the bounding boxes uh, to say, okay, where, where's the actual uh, thing? Uh, but you also have information like la latitude and longitude, where was it situated in, on, in the world? And this MID stuff, that's the, the knowledge graph, the Google knowledge graph. It's kind of all the concepts in the world uh, that uh, Google knows about and Google search uses, etc. Uh, so, uh, with uh, that uh, knowledge graph, you can also get additional information, for example, finding related, uh, related links uh, on 
Wikipedia or things like that. Um, and the, the, just uh, when was that, um, last month or two months ago, or no, or last month, uh, there were some new uh, features which were um, added to this uh, API. So crop hints uh, to suggest uh, if you can crop the, the picture uh, to a different di dimension. Web annotations, I'm going to show you where, what this is about, uh, giving you details of what has been found on the web related to that picture. And it's uh, the, the OCR capability for recognizing the, the text in pictures has uh, also be, uh, been improved. Uh, the web annotations, let's, let's look at this car. That's the Ford Anglia uh, car that you can see in the Harry Potter movie. And interestingly, this particular uh, car was actually taken uh, from the, the Ford Anglia, which is at the Art Science Museum in, uh, here in, uh, in Singapore. And the, uh, you also have the information about the, um, the uh, knowledge graph uh, ID uh, again and uh, where it's coming from. That's coming from the, the Harry Potter uh, series of, uh, of books. Uh, the web annotations also tell you, okay, where is this picture coming from? Is there uh, where uh, Google knows that uh, this picture uh, was found on uh, Wikipedia, on the Wikipedia page. Uh, it gives you also some uh, other URLs of images uh, that, for example, they, they, they took the same image but cropped it and reintegrated uh, it in, in, in their website. Uh, or uh, you can also find other uh, websites with uh, equivalent uh, images as well. Uh, let me do a quick demo. Uh, so if you go to, I'm going to increase a little bit. So you go to the uh, cloud.google.com uh, page, then you can click on products and you'll see this, all the, all the products available on the Google Cloud Platform, and in particular this section about the machine learning uh, and the APIs we support. So let's click on the Vision API here. What's nice is that for all those APIs, there's a try out box. Uh, so is the Wi-Fi? working, I hope so, because otherwise all my demos will uh, <laughs> just not work. That's going to be a, oh yeah, it's coming. So it gives you, oh, it's in French, right, that's interesting. I'm French, and uh, it probably used my local, uh, uh, but, it, but it doesn't matter. So if you, uh, where is it, where's the tryout, hmm. there should be a tryout section, but perhaps that's because I'm in French. Where's the is that? Um, hmm? No, it's you think you think it, it's because it's low loading? Huh? No, seriously. Should I look at the source of the <laughs> page to see what's inside? Wow, well, there's lots of stuff. Uh, I'm not sure I should be looking at that. <laughs> um, no, is it really slow loading or it's coming up? That's strange. Or perhaps I should force in the, uh, 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 let me just reload just to be sure it's not that. Because yesterday I just did it and uh, it was just fine. Uh, or perhaps I can force my browser to be in English. Perhaps it's because I'm in French somehow. Uh, or not with the preferences perhaps as well. Um, mm -mm -mm -mm. Sorry? Or incognito, that's a good idea. Yeah. That's a good idea, thank you. Cloud, Google, that. But it might have my uh, products. So let's see if it's happier that way. Um, okay. Machine learning, vision. No, it's still in English, so I think I have to change the preferences of my uh, browser, I guess. Oh, too bad. Uh, so how do you set the language? Anyone knows? Advanced settings, perhaps? Uh, language, language and input settings, and I'm going to put English first. Let's try that. Done. 
Uh, okay. You have it in, in English, I guess. And I is it showing up in the English version of the page? Yeah, the tryout. Yeah, okay, it's there. Okay, <coughs> good to know. Uh, oh, and the Wi-Fi is not super fast. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Don't use the Wi-Fi. Please. So at least it's in English and what the fuck? <coughs> ah, yeah, it's there. <laughs> okay, so for example, um, perhaps you've seen this somewhere. <laughs> so uh, there's this trial section, so you can uh, drag and drop pictures. Uh, so it found uh, the, the label, so it's a skyline, etc. A urban area uh, taken at night. Uh, you can see it probably taken from Sentosa, uh, Singapore, etc. So, uh, well, there are some things, I'm not sure. Yeah, hotel bus, there's a hotel bus, I guess, I don't know. Uh, what's weird though is this one, um, it seems like it managed to recognize something in the huh. in the light patterns on the <laughs> so this is strange <laughs> but well uh, uh, what else you can see uh, the dominant colors etc uh, also uh, it's able to tell you if it's some you know adult uh, content or something like this you can see also the the JSON the details and I'm gonna take another example with uh, this one <laughs> So it's a spoofed uh, image in the sense that uh, there was some text added to a, a real image. You can see the, uh, the various bounding boxes for the face recognition, uh, like, you know, joy, sorrow, anger. Uh, perhaps anger should be higher, I don't know. Um, <laughs> so for example, if you look at the text, yeah, it managed to uh, recognize Kovfefe, uh, <laughs> etc. Um, and uh, it's spoofed uh, in the sense that th there's been some text added uh, to the original picture. All right. Um, uh, okay, slides coming up. And if we come back just to um, uh, the, the, the pictures of dogs and mops, uh, so for example, for this dog, it really recognized it's a dog. This one, it's a, a broom, a tool. Uh, but for these two pictures, uh, if you used the, uh, the Vision API, uh, for this one it recognized some fur, but it didn't figure out that it was a, a dog. Uh, and the, this one at the bottom, uh, it said it's some kind of textile, but it didn't really recognize. So it's not that far away or that wrong, but it didn't recognize uh, as, a, as a tool, as a broom, as a mop. All right, next, the natural language API, you can extract entities, the various uh, elements, uh, the sentiment, whether a phrase or a sentence is a positive or a negative, uh, and see also the structure of uh, your sentences. So for example, in this uh, sentence, uh, which speaks about, which talks about uh, J.K. Rowling, the Harry Potter uh, author, it recognized those different entities, and John, Joe Rowling, J.K. Rowling, Robert Galbraith are actually one and single person. Robert Galbraith is the, uh, the pen name uh, um, of uh, J.K. Rowling for some of her books. And it really re recognized that that's just the same person and it points uh, at the, um, the, this uh, Wikipedia page, uh, which is referenced in the knowledge graph, which uh, knows about uh, J.K. Rowling. British, it recognized it's some location, uh, pointing at the United Kingdom. And here, Harry Potter, it recognized uh, Harry Potter as the, the person of the, uh, of the book. The sentiment analysis, um, so you can, okay, uh, uh, look at the score and magnitude. The score, uh, it's, uh, it can range from minus one to plus one, whether it's negative towards positive. A magnitude, it's how strong uh, this feeling is being expressed. And here you can also see the, the syntax, uh, how the, the sentence is made, like the determinant, the noun, uh, the verbs, uh, etc. And also additional information, for example, for the verb, what, what mood was used, 
whether it's singular, which person was used, etc. And uh, if we um, do the a similar uh, test here, I think I can write NL, uh, it goes straight to the page. Uh, and here again, there should be, if it's loading up, and it's in English, so it's okay, so it's uh, just slow loading, all right. So for example, uh, something I wanted to do, just like in, in my example, uh, the food was great, but a slightly different sentence, but the service was awful. In this uh, sentence, you actually have two different sentiments. Uh, how do you write hopeful? Yeah. Uh, analyze. Uh, so w w the, the two entities that are recognized, the two, let's say, concepts, there, there's food and there's service. Right? And you can have uh, the, the sentiment not just for the whole sentence, but as well for the various uh, entities. And here, the food was great, so it's positive, 0 0.9, it's close to 1. And uh, the service was awful, sounds, mm, yeah, now perhaps it didn't really see. There are two L's? No, how do you spell awful? No, there's no E, right? Don't know how to spell awful, I'm sorry. I'm awful at... Uh, <laughs> Spelling, yeah, and it's uh, yeah because it didn't recognize my wrong spelling. I'm sorry. And minus zero dot seven, that's something quite uh, negative. Uh, and yeah, the syntax, that's the the nice graph that you saw, the the various uh, elements of that sentence. <coughs> Next, we're gonna have a look at the speech API. So uh, the speech recognition works across 80 different languages. So it's uh, pretty, pretty good. Uh, let's have a look at a little demo. So uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, perhaps sorry, I'm, I'm going to show it in action directly. Um, no, let me explain first. Uh, so what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to record my voice. Uh, I'm going to send that audio file uh, to the speech API. Uh, this spe speech API is going to give me the, the text. Then I'm going to use the natural language processing API to see the various parts of my uh, sentence. And then, uh, and there's a, and this is wrong because I used that uh, box days conf uh, Singapore be correct. And I actually um, created a special custom search uh, engine using, using a Google custom search to actually search the, uh, the program, uh, which is uh, go to the schedule, uh, to search the program. So uh, my little tool uh, is, is going to, uh, so if I click, let's say, uh, this talk, which is here, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, I'm going to say something like, okay, is there a presentation about machine learning? And I wanted to return a result uh, pointing at this uh, particular uh, page. So let me show that in action. So I've got uh, a little uh, script that I'm going to show you. So I did that uh, just with uh, common line tools, basically, and using curl to, to call the REST API. Uh, for the, the speech recognition and the um, <coughs> speech recognition uh, and the natural language processing, and also uh, same thing for the the custom search. So I'm using uh, socks for uh, recording my voice. Then I'm going to send that uh, to Google Cloud Storage to store the file, and I'm going to instruct the speech API to do the recognition on that file that is stored on Google Cloud storage. Uh, then I've prepared some, um, uh, so I, I save that in a file, then I'm going to use a little tool called JQ, which allows you to uh, uh, go, uh, navigate through some uh, JSON content, the, the return, the response uh, from the API call. Uh, then I'm going to do another call to call the natural language uh, processing, etc., and finding the, the right information. So let me uh, try that. So uh, let me record. Is there a presentation about machine learning? So I'm uploading to cloud storage. So it takes a few seconds. Yeah, I need to update the gcloud command. <coughs> uh, 
this is uh, the request that I sent. Then this is the response. Oh, let, let me uh, scroll back a little bit because it goes too fast afterwards. This is uh, the, the response. So the speech API uh, said, OK, is there a presentation about machine learning? It really re recognized the, what I actually said. Uh, then I called the natural language processing API, which then, so it's a bit more verbose, this one. But you'll see, uh, I mean, all the, like all the words about machine learning. Uh, then I, I went through the, the, the JSON uh, that you see there, and I retrieved, oops, I retrieved all the, um, all, all the words. And I was just interested in the, the part about, uh, after the, the about keyword, basically. So I looked at just that part of the sentence, because I have the structure of the sentence. And then I retrieved the topic, so I'm interested in machine learning. And then I'm using the custom search, uh, Google custom search tool, to actually search for uh, sessions about machine learning. And indeed, so there's what, so the, it's uh, returning just the, the, so I should output the URL instead of, uh, I'm actually outputting the, uh, the title of the page. And if you look at the website here, indeed the title of the page, that's um, Guillaume Laforge, Vox Day, Singapore. So it really found the, the right page. Next time I should change that to, to output the URL. So pretty quickly, you can combine different APIs together. Uh, ready-made uh, machine learning APIs and create something useful. Okay. <clears throat> the translation API. Uh, so this one is actually one of the oldest uh, APIs that we have. Um, and um, so before it wasn't part of the, the Google Cloud Platform, but now it's also available there. For example, in Airbnb, uh, when you travel, 60% uh, of all Airbnb uh, bookings actually connect people who are from, well, who are actually using different languages. And uh, that's pretty handy, uh, because even if you go to a place where you don't really master the, the language, you can still interact with, with, your, with your host. Uh, and, uh, uh, yeah, uh, I can do a little test uh, for the translations. I think I can just translate. <coughs> translate here and okay. So I'm, not, I'm just going to use the, uh, the example there. So I don't, so I am not a robot for sure. Well, at least I don't think so. Or I'm not self-aware. So, uh, well, I'm don't speak Chinese, so I'm not really able to uh, assess whether the translation is good or not. Uh, but at least, uh, well, you know the, how it works. Uh, yeah, so that might be it. <laughs> Just uh, trust the translation. And uh, yeah, perhaps I can show you. I didn't really show you, so I, I showed the, uh, some shell scripts. But uh, for example, here's the uh, Java SDK. So if you want to integrate the Translate API in your uh, application, it's fairly uh, straightforward. And uh, yeah, you just uh, uh, retrieve the, the translation service, and you call the Translate method, and you pass the text, as well as the uh, source language and target lang language, and call get translated text to uh, return uh, the, the translation. So it's fairly easy to, to use. And uh, what's interesting, um, about uh, the, uh, this uh, translation uh, uh, API is that, so before, uh, a few months back, uh, we had a, an existing uh, translation service <coughs> that um, actually used statistical models uh, with humans who actually uh, defined the rules for various languages uh, to understand the uh, the structure of text, etc., and to figure out how to best uh, do, do translation. But that, w that was initially with rules that were defined by uh, human beings. And we totally scrapped that uh, totally with a new uh, neural machine learning translation system, uh, which is based on uh, deep learning techniques uh, using um, some, uh, so th this uh, little uh, animation shows the um, uh, 
so it's a form of, uh, I think that's an LSTM neural network, long short term memory. Uh, so I'm, I'm not a big, big expert in the virus uh, structures of um, uh, neural networks, but it's able to uh, uh, look at the various uh, words and parts of a sentence uh, progressively and make up the, uh, the, the, the translation uh, by really mapping uh, elements from one word in a certain language to another word and see how uh, things are related together, let's say an adjective which is tied to uh, a name, etc. And this uh, uh, very quickly uh, compared to the many years that had been spent in improving the, uh, the, the statistical model uh, that was used before, in, uh, in, in a matter of uh, six months they had completely redone uh, the, the translation and with much improved translations. For example, here in this uh, uh, text, again from Harry Potter, let's say the, the, the Spanish existing translation, uh, then uh, the first generation translation in the middle, which was using uh, the, uh, the statistical model versus the neural machine translation. And for example, things like uh, the, the company from uh, Mr. Dursley, uh, manufactured drills instead of making drills or instead of necklace which is not quite correct it's without a neck etc uh, or uh, almost twice longer than usual it's not totally correct almost twice as long is more correct etc so it's pretty much uh, uh, I've tried that on, on, on French for well my own needs and I really found the the quality <coughs> the quality of the translation to be uh, really much, much improved. And before, uh, often you could figure out that uh, it was machine tr translated with the statistical model, whereas with a neural model, uh, it's much, much better. And sometimes it's very difficult to figure out that it's, uh, uh, it's not translated by a, by a human being. <coughs> the Video Intelligence API. So you can think of it as uh, j just like the, um, the, the, the vision API, but instead of uh, still pictures, that's moving pictures. Uh, let's directly have a look at um, a little demo, uh, the vision API. Uh, no, oops, no, not vision. Uh, where is it? Video intelligence API. So uh, I'm going to select some of the sample videos which are available. I'm still not a robot, I tell you. Uh, which one am I going to use? Let's say, uh, uh, yeah, perhaps uh, <coughs> this one with uh, Jen Gobble. Uh, so this is the, the scientist that worked with um, apes uh, in Africa. So this video, uh, so it's going to be uh, uploaded and passed to the uh, uh, video uh, intelligence API. Uh, so it takes a little while because uh, the, the video is quite big. But what's interesting uh, is that it's able to uh, figure out what are the, the various shots, the various sections of uh, the video. Uh, and for each uh, section, it's able to figure out, okay, what's inside? So it's some nature animal, trees, and it's going to change the, the labels as we, um, as we uh, let's see, uh, yeah, pretty much the same, or perhaps I should have chosen a different video with more changing scenes. Oh, no, that's, uh, yeah, that's here, that you see the, <coughs> the different labels changing. So you see the various shots, and you also see that the labels are changing because it figures out, it figures out what's inside that particular shot. So there should be a, yeah, an ape here that appears. Etc. So let's see what the next one shows up. Yeah, again, ape, animal, wildlife, etc. And um, yeah, uh, what, what other information is there? Yeah, the labels. And here, uh, the well, the, the request, the, the response that you you get with all the all the details. So what's nice with that is that you are uh, able to also search for videos. So let's say you have a. Uh, in your website, you let uh, users upload videos. Uh, you can have uh, people search through uh, the videos. So we, there's a snake there. Uh, so if I search for uh, snakes, I'm able to find uh, videos containing snakes, etc. All right.
Um, so there's also things like label detection. Uh, so this one it figures out that there's a portrait, and you can see also uh, in which segment uh, with the offset uh, this appears in the in the video. So all these are pre-trained models which are available as uh, APIs that you can use again from a REST API or from a, a, an SDK. <coughs> Uh, but all those models are actually using uh, a framework that we actually open sourced called uh, TensorFlow. So TensorFlow, that's actually the second generation uh, deep learning library that we created. We had another one internally that wasn't open sourced, but this one we open sourced it. So it's available in, a, um, you can use it from Python or C++, that's the two main uh, APIs or languages, let's say. Uh, but there, there's also experimental support, so the, the, uh, the API might, might change a little bit uh, because they are currently labeled uh, as experimental, but you can also use it from uh, Java as well, uh, which also means that you can use uh, pre-trained models in things like your mobile applications as well. Uh, so with this uh, framework, you can describe your machine learning model, so you can define the, the, the features, uh, that you want to uh, map and recognize. You can define the, the kind of neural network that you want to use, uh, recurrent neural network, uh, convolutional neural network, etc. And uh, you're able to select those algorithms and then you can use this framework to also, <coughs> uh, oh yeah, regression models also I didn't mention. Uh, you can then use uh, this framework to train your model. So you give it tons and tons of data and it's going to figure out uh, by itself uh, what it has to learn depending on the features that you've, uh, you've selected. Uh, so this is available on uh, tensorflow.org. Uh, there's lots of uh, uh, documentation um, about it if you want to, to learn a little bit more about that. Um, and so when you use TensorFlow, uh, you can use that on your own machine or on, 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 a, on a server. But as part of the Google Cloud Platform, there's also uh, a tool, a service that you can use called the Cloud Machine Learning Engine, uh, which is basically TensorFlow in the cloud. So you can uh, send your model uh, into uh, this uh, service on the cloud, and you also pass the, the data, and you let it uh, run through the, um, uh, all, all the data and learn from, uh, from the data. Uh, so this is the training part where you train your uh, model and then you can also run the predictions once, once the model is trained. Afterwards you can reuse it to say, okay, uh, tell me what's inside that picture, if it's a, 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 the a kind of vision API that you've uh, implemented. Uh, here I have a, a little command line which shows uh, an example of how you can submit the job uh, of uh, running uh, uh, training on a, on a particular uh, system. Uh, so you can, you can use the uh, UI, you can use that uh, to, to submit stuff. So this is available, uh, also what it's, um, uh, what I forget to mention is that the advantage of running that in the cloud is that uh, you can use as many uh, servers uh, as you want. So you can define uh, how fast how, and how much you're ready to spend and how fast uh, you want the, the training to happen. Because running on lots and lots of data, running the, the training, uh, it can you, it can take you know hours, but perhaps or perhaps days or weeks to train for very uh, complex uh, data sets and huge data sets. But if you do that uh, in the cloud, you can say, okay, uh, I want to use GPUs, I want to use a uh, hundred servers, and then instead of doing that in a week, uh, you might have the result in just a few hours. So depending on how much. Uh, you're ready to spend on how fast you want to get the results, you can decide uh, how the distributed training should be taking place uh, in the cloud. All right, uh, so all these uh, pre-trained models in the form of APIs are available online. You, you can use those little demos to play with them. There's uh, lots of documentation, uh, and samples available. There's uh, all the uh, SDKs in various languages, and in particular in Java. Uh, to call those APIs. We have the TensorFlow open source project, which can also be used uh, via Java uh, as well, uh, thanks to the experimental API. 
and then the machine learning engine uh, is so if you want to do the, the training and predictions and inferences uh, within the cloud. So that's it. Thanks a lot for your attention. <clears throat>
version 3 of the inception model. Uh, it's, avail it's available, I think, somewhere on GitHub. I forget where it is. Uh, you can actually take that model, run it for yourself, or uh, even more interesting, because you might have, uh, so it works well on various kind of pictures. But for example, perhaps you, for your own use case, you'd want it to recognize uh, the various uh, types of uh, uh, nuts and bolts or whatever. OK? Uh, and you can also actually take that model and retrain it on your own uh, data sets of pictures. And you, so you add the labels, etc. of course. Uh, and you're able to uh, further tune an existing model for your particular need, which is a pretty useful and interesting. Training using your video. Training? Uh, using your video. Using? Video, video. 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 Uh, so, um, you mean uh, vision plus video? Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know exactly how the like the video has been implemented. Whether it's using some part of the existing Vision API, etc. Uh, so if you were wanting to do the same thing with the the video uh, uh, for your own needs, I don't know if we I don't think we've open sourced that one. Uh, so you could perhaps extract the various frames once in a while and do that analysis. But it's uh, yeah, it's more more work, obviously. Right. Uh, what time do we have? Uh, do I have time for one more question? One? Uh, was there one more? Yeah, over there. So, uh, I'm, I'm going to make you repeat because I didn't hear very well. Say it loud. Yeah. Okay. What we do with the data, basically. Yeah. So uh, on-premise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, it, the, the, the TensorFlow project, you can use it and run it on your machine, on your GPU, etc. So it's totally possible. And then the model, you can reuse it and deploy it on a mobile phone, a web app, or whatever, wherever you want to, to uh, make it uh, on your server, etc. Uh, so yeah, on-premise, you don't have to use a cloud machine learning engine to actually do the training. It's just that it helps. Uh, getting training and predictions uh, faster than running that on your own machine because it can take uh, days or weeks uh, to, to train a complica on a complicated data set. Uh, also, yeah, when you're uh, using um, the uh, cloud machine learning engine, uh, the, the data uh, that, that, you, that you, you send, uh, I mean, in term, in the, if you look at the terms and services of uh, uh, the, the service, we uh, definitely don't use or keep your pictures, etc. Well, you have to upload them somewhere, uh, for example, on cloud storage. So afterwards, so the data belongs to you, right? It doesn't belong to Google. You are not going to find a, a question I often get is uh, whether uh, the pictures I've uploaded, will they be on uh, Google search? No, of course not. Don't worry uh, about that. Uh, but then if you used Google Cloud Storage, uh, you would have to uh, delete afterwards uh, the, the, the data, but that, that's going to be your responsibility. Okay, well, thanks a lot for your attention and enjoy the rest of the show.